right, guys, welcome back. Today, we are working on a Ram TRX. Man, this thing is bad. I know, I know, I work on Rams at work every day and I might hate on them, but they're not a TRX. They're 3.6 Pentastars and once in a while a 5.7 Hemi, but none of them have the supercharged 6.2 Hellcat motor like this one does. She's a sweet unit. So Chris has brought us some Geyser off-road Ram TRX springs to install on the truck. These springs should lift the back approximately an inch and a half and the front approximately three inches. So we're gonna get some before measurements and, uh, and we'll take some after measurements. He does have a couple other things in the bed, so the measurements may slightly be different from what you have if you are doing my video as a tutorial on installing your springs. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get to work. So just for my own curiosity, jacking the truck up, I wanted to see how much droop travel was available from the factory. You can see that, I believe this was at 40 inches before, now we're 46 and a half. That's, the tire is just, just touching the concrete floor and the suspension's at its full maximum amount of drop. So you've got, six and a half inches of down travel from the factory setup. So the coil spring won't change the amount of um, the maximum drop. Um, what it is gonna do is add more preload height to it. So we'll have a higher resting height, but the extended height should remain unchanged because we're not changing anything with shock length or um, suspension pickup point or anything like that. So. So this, this maximum amount of drop with the tire should remain unchanged. Um, it's just gonna be that ride height setting um, where it will be different. All right, so we got the truck supported up on jack stands and just kind of getting our head in here and taking a first look. And uh, man, these shocks are beef. And interestingly enough, they have this active terrain dynamics. So they've got electronic valving and hoses and a remote reservoir that are all tied into that. All right, so the um, sensor lines just snap around the remote reservoir hose. And then there are a couple of plugins back there. Um, hard to see, but um, plugins that are on the side of the shock and literally you just have to push the tab in and then just slightly pull back on the wire and um, you're able to unplug these sensor wires. Which I may have to use a second hand here. I can't do the bottom one with just one hand, but it unplugs pretty easy. On the back of the shock, they do have the wire held to the shock body with one of the like Christmas tree style fasteners. So you'll need like a fork tool and gently wiggle that out so we don't damage the, uh, the branches of the tree, so to speak. Um, and then as far as the remote reservoirs, um, if you look in from the driver's side, you can see bolts on the bracket that are holding those uh, remote reservoirs. So we'll reach in from the driver's side. We shouldn't even have to undo the skid plate, I hope. And as far as the shock or strut itself, uh, it appears we're gonna need to uh, undo the upper control arm um, at the knuckle, for, uh, undo the upper ball joint, so we'll pop that. Um, we're gonna loosen the arms, top and bottom, to allow the suspension to travel uh, as much as we can out of the way. And uh, we'll see what uh, that gives us clearance to get the strut out of there. So it has three nuts on the top on either side, and then this gigantic bolt with a nut on the bottom. So we're gonna continue on that direction and uh, we'll see how we make out here. All right, so the bolt holding that remote reservoir is right there. It's a 13 millimeter head 
And then we're gonna get that one out of there. And I think that is it. Looking at it from all the angles, I don't see one on the bottom. So we'll pull that bolt and see where we get here. And that was it. So one single bolt, the bracket dropped out, and then uh, you can pop the reservoirs out of the bracket. So you can see I've got this one here and the other one sitting there. And now that we have that portion out, we can get to work on removing the strut. So moving along in the disassembly process, um, that upper ball joint nut is a 21 millimeter. And the nuts on the top of the strut hats are 16 millimeter or 5 eighths are actually tight enough you can use either. I don't have a 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench, but I have a 5 eighths and it's working just great. So I'm going to go ahead and take the ball joint nut down to where it's just hold on by a thread or two. So when we uh, strike the knuckle to get it to break free, it won't fall all the way off. Um, and we can kind of hold it and steady it as we take the last couple threads off by hand and uh, we'll get those upper nuts off the uh, strut tower and then we'll uh, work towards loosening up all the control arm bolts so that the suspension will droop out as much as possible. So on the back two bolts on the driver's side strut there is a wiring harness that has a little round tab and it's just pushed down onto the threads above the nut and I was able to, through the wheel well, use my fork tool, get underneath those and push them off of the threads. It's not threaded on, there's no extra nut holding it on, but it did require some force to push them off of there. Um, but it's just a, you know, a plastic thing that's pushed down on the threads to keep the wire away from the exhaust manifold and, you know, steering shaft and other things that are hot and moving. So you will have to do that to get those back to nuts off on the driver's side strut. Okay, so now that we've got that hardware all loose, now we're gonna go ahead and loosen the control arm bolts. So the uppers are 21 millimeter. The lowers, you want to loosen the 24 millimeter nut, and it is on the back side of the arm, both front and back of the control arm there. So we'll just, we'll loosen these. You're gonna have to get an alignment when you're done anyway. So, um, you know, it's not like the end of the world. You wanna keep them close, you'll put a mark and try to not move the adjuster as you tighten it back up. But again, you're changing the center position of that bushing at ride height, right? So everything was set up to be at this ride height before, now the control arm's twisted downward more because of the lift. So you wanna loosen these and retighten them once the vehicle is on its weight again so that bushing is centered and you don't wear your bushings prematurely and you don't have the extra preload of that bushing twist in your suspension, therefore, you know, making your ride quality more harsh. So um, again, just something I do on every single one of these lifts that I do and I highly recommend it for the longevity of your vehicle. All right, so all the upper and lower control arm bolts are loose. Again, I still haven't broken this free. I wanna leave that together as long as I can until the last possible second. We'll break that free, swing the arm up to get the strut out. However, we've now gotten to this massive lower shock bolt. This thing is huge, 30 millimeter head. And the body of it is just gargantuan. So, yeah, that's a big one. Get that out. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and get that out on the other side. Then we'll break loose this. Um, we'll tap the knuckle, break that upper ball joint loose from its tapered seat. We'll swing the arm up out of the way and hopefully be able to get these struts out of here. So this I probably won't be able to film because um, I'm working by myself. And these parts are heavy. All right, so we ended up pulling the axle nut, which was 36 millimeters, removing that, and then removing the sway bar link from the lower control arm to allow enough droop travel so that we can get this strut out of here. And now we got to, uh, yeah, I got my other buddy Chris over here. He's gonna help me. We got to pry that out of that lower arm. So there's a uh, seven reverse. 
there's a strut that thing is massive so it did require we we did end up putting um actually the the lower arm would drop too far almost so we did end up putting uh another jack stand out here to kind of support the lower arm from going too far down giving us some slack on that brake hose make sure we got nothing pulling too tight there and then um we had to get in behind this little sleeve and pry it over a little bit to allow uh, the release of the strut from the lower arm and then we had to finagle the bypass tube hose from underneath the uh, tie rod and then like twist the body of the shock as we came out so but there you are holy smokes look at that cv axle like that thing is it's it's girthy i think it's huge yeah i would say this thing was built to withstand some abuse all right so it's uh next morning and we are taking the struts over to my buddy john who has a heavy duty wall mounted spring compressor because um, the spring rates on these things are pretty high. Um, I think I read 920 um, pounds up to 1,000 pounds on the front spring. So um, definitely going to have to have some heavy duty for uh, swapping these out. Um, so we're going to go utilize his uh, strut compressor and uh, probably be better stop at Olson's and grab some donuts to take him. Um, partial payment anyway because who doesn't like donuts? West End Beach looking over West Bay this is why we live where the air hurts our face it's beautiful so I asked John if he needed me to pick anything up along the way had me stop at Napa I don't know he's got a box of parts and some mufflers here stuff but that's the kind of thing you do when the guy's going to help you out, right? So we'll get his stuff in there. We'll get these struts in here. See if we can get these springs swapped over. I'm swapping over the rubber spring isolators from the stock spring to the geyser spring. And then we'll uh, get it loaded back up in the compressor. Locking her into the machine. Just like that. They're on there. What fun. So the top strut nut is 20 millimeter, which is super rare, oddball thing. Fortunately, John had one in his toolbox, but his was even a metric one. We had to like machine down, <laughs> grind down to yeah. fit in the top of the strut. So just a heads up. Just on our way back, coming down to Grandview Parkway here, West Bay. Headed back from John's. We got the struts uh, in the back with the new spring swapped onto them. And we're headed home, see if we can get them bolted back in. So I was able to finagle the strut back into there and we got the reservoir clipped into its bracket. We can't bolt the bracket up until we get the other reservoir in there, but make sure you get all your wiring clips snapped back into place. Um, you don't want those getting caught up or anything if you're out in the wilderness. Um, the Christmas tree plug pushed back in um, that holds the wire to the back of the strut. Got the electrical connectors connected back on the side of the strut. And we got all the strut top bolts are tight. Uh, upper ball joints tight, sway bar link is tight. And then again, um, I, I'll wait until I have the front of the truck sitting on the ground on its own weight before I'll get under here and we'll tighten the lower strut bolt and all the uh, upper and lower control arms. So um, we do need to retorque this axle nut because I took it loose and pushed the axle in to, to avoid pulling it apart. Um, so we'll need to retorque that, and that is 185 foot-pounds. 
make sure we get that torque to spec. Um, but yeah, so far so good. One down, one to go. Okay. She's in the air, coming down. So I haven't obviously cycled the suspension or rolled it or anything. I'm just gonna do a, a quick preliminary measurement. We have 43 and a quarter. And that, again, that's, I haven't moved the suspension or anything that's sitting exactly where it was as I dropped the jack. So we definitely got three inches of lift. I'm sure it'll settle that quarter inch once you roll it a little bit, um, you know, and unchock the back wheels. But now uh, we got to tighten all these suspension bolts. So upper and lower control arm bolts and the lower strut bolt on either side. We're gonna crawl around in here, get everything tightened up. Now that the bushings are resting at where they're gonna be in the center position, at, at ride height position. Um, so we'll get all that stuff tightened up. Okay, so we got the back supported by jack stands and a jack under the axle. And in the rear, um, Thankfully, we can leave the top of the shock attached in the reservoir. We don't have to mess with any of that. We can just undo the lower shock bolt. And then I'm um, guessing we're going to want to um, disconnect the brake caliper and support it. And then we'll loosen all of the link arm bolts as well as the track bar bolts and allow you know the axle to drop down as far as possible. You do want to be mindful of the wiring and brake lines that go from the frame to the axle. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we're not overstretching any of that stuff as we come down. So we'll keep a close eye on that and disconnect things as necessary or, you know, undo brackets to gain slack in the line, whatever is required. So we can get those in there. And uh, yeah, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so I've loosened the link arm bolts, the track bar bolts, and uh, removed those lower shock bolts. Um, I've got the axle on a jack, and I've lowered it down where I still have slop in the brake line. They're not like tight, it's not pulling on it or anything. Um, and the spring is just slightly dislodged here. So we can lift the bottom of the spring up, pull it out, We'll transfer the rubber isolators over to the new spring and slip it in. Okay, so we've moved all the rubber isolator pieces over to the new spring and the closest proximity to them, as I could tell from where they were on the original. Um, it is important to note that the springs are small side up or the smaller diameter end goes to the top. And there is a notch in the upper coil mount, you need to make sure that you align your notch properly um, so that that is located where it needs to be and the spring won't try and twist or move on you. So got that end in. We're gonna let this side float while we go take care of the other side. And we'll uh, have to slowly jack the jack up, checking and making sure we align the top of those coils into their resting places. We'll jack her back up, get the shocks bolted on, get the wheels bolted on, and we'll put it back on its way down the ground and tighten up all the control arms. Okay, so in order to get the driver's side to drop low enough, I hooked the shock back up on this side, on the passenger side, and then I had to unbolt the track bar from the axle at this end to allow enough drop travel to get the spring out of this side. So um, I'm now in the midst of putting the spring back in, but just thought I'd give you guys a little update there so you're not fighting and fighting like I started to. And uh, yeah, we'll get the spring pop back in there. Again, 
<clears throat> as I was putting that shock in over there, I went ahead and made sure that I had the coil spring aligned, the notch at the top where it sits into its rest up there. So uh, yeah, we'll get this one in, make sure we do the same. And we'll jack the axle back up and keep bolting things together. Okay, so for lining the track bar back up, um, I got the shocks hooked up, the coil springs are where they need to be. We've jacked the axle up. Um, the panhard or track bar needs to be um, kind of as level as factory ride height in order to center that. But however now, even jacked all the way up because the back of the truck's been lifted an inch and a half, um, that track bar bolt just didn't quite want to line up. So I've got this pry bar is resting in here, um, kind of keeping the track bar slides up it as um, I tighten the ratchet strap. And I've just done a couple of clicks on the ratchet strap. Not a ton of pressure, but just enough that I couldn't just grab it and pry it over. So, but a couple of clicks on the ratchet strap, the bolt slips right in nice and easy. We'll get the nut plate on the back. We will get it loosely installed and then we'll uh, set everything down on the ground on the tires and tighten it all up. Just like that, there's a pile of old springs. There's the new look of the TRX. So I'm gonna roll it front to back a little bit. We'll let them settle just that initial tiny bit and we'll take some after measurements quick. Okay, with the geyser off-road springs, the fronts, this side, driver's side, sitting about 42 and a half. The rear, about 43. Again, remember, he does have a couple things in the bed, nothing crazy, some tires and wheels for a side-by-side -side or something. Uh, passenger rear, also 43. Passenger front about 43, so it's like it's, it's pretty level. Be curious to see once he gets alignment done on it how it uh, how it tallies out, but it looks great, way better. I don't know why the factory doesn't do this stuff from the beginning. It just never makes sense to me. You're gonna make an off-road truck and then the front bumper's about touching the ground. Just seems kind of stupid and pointless, but yeah, yeah. There she is, all lifted up on the geyser off-road springs. So much better. Man, that looks tough. Come on, Ram. Why didn't you do this from the factory? Man, that looks good. <laughs> 